Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Group Anagrams. It's medium. Let's get into it. Given an array of strings, group the anagrams together. You can return the answer in any order. An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all the original letters exactly once. Okay. Actually, before we even get into this problem, we've done a valid anagram before, so I have that link down below. Give that a watch. These problems are very similar. So if you watch that and give this problem another shot, I think you'll get very close to it, if not be able to fully solve it. So watch that because we are sort of building off of it. And this is group anagram. So we're going to move on with this one. Okay, so for group anagrams, example one, we have the following array of the strings, and we want to group all the anagrams together. So here we have eight, eat, t in one group, nat and tan, and bat just by itself. And here all the words in the same group are made up of the same letters. So we have 1a, 1t, 1e in this group. If we also had t in our input, it would be part of this group as well. Example two, we have just the empty string, so that is a group of just the empty string by itself. And example three, we have A, which is the lone anagram group of just A. So we want to group all the anagrams together in our input list. How are we going to do that? Okay, let's take a look at example one again. So I have the following strings as my input. Now I want to group them together if they can form each other's words, right? We want to group all the anagrams together. So how do I do that? Say I'm iterating through my input strings. The first word I come across is eat. So I'm going to put that in a group. So let's say this is a group right here. I have eat. Now I come across T. How do I know what group to put it in? Do I put it in a group that I already have or do I make a new group? Well, T and eat are made up of the same letters, E-A-T. So they can form each other's words and our anagrams so T would actually belong with eat in the same group. Now I come across tan and I see that they don't have the same letters. So it's going to be its own group with T-A-N because it can't form E-A-T nor can it form T-E-A. And instead of actually making checks of every single word that's in, you know, every single group before, what I can do is just pick one word to sort of represent my entire group. So say for my first one, I pick eat to represent all the anagrams in this group. So any word that I put in this group is going to be represented by eat because they all have the same letters. They're anagrams of each other. So same over here, I'm going to have tan sort of be an index, an identifier for this group. And now as I go through my list, I come across eight. Does it form the same word as E? It does, so this is going to be in this group right here, A-T-E. Now I see Nat. Nat and Eat don't really match, but Tan and Nat do, so I'm adding it into this group right here. Now I come across Bat. Again, I just need to make one check with the keys that I have, and it doesn't match, so I know it's going to be its own key with its own group. So I have Bat right here. And these would be the grouped anagrams that I would return in the end. Essentially, what we're doing here is keeping a dictionary where we have keys being some arbitrary word that every single grouped word, so every single word in this group, can form. So what I'm going to do is make a dictionary, have key be an identifier for my group, and my value of that key is going to be a list of words that can be grouped together, that are anagrams of each other. Now, how can I pick my word? These are words, right? So instead of picking some words, say it's eat, in which case I would have to somehow maybe count all the letters or make checks of, what I can do is go ahead and sort every single word that I come across. So for eat, what does it look like once it's sorted? Eat sorted is A, E, T. So that's what I'm going to keep as my key. So A, E, T. And any word that once sorted equals my key is going to be put into that group. So this is going to be represented by A, E, T. T, A, N becomes A, N, T. 
and BAT becomes ABT. I'm going to sort every single word, see if it matches my key. If it does, it is going to be appended to my list as the grouped anagram. And in the end, all I have to do is return my values. So how does this look like coded up? To code this up, the very first thing I'm going to be doing is creating a dictionary. And I'm actually going to be making a default dictionary, so default dictionary of a list. Now what this allows me to do is instead of checking if my key is present, and if so, appending my word to an existing list, or if it's not already present, I create a new key, make a new list at that key, and then add my word to it. Any key by default already has an empty list. So whether or not this key exists, all I have to do is append my word to this list. So it makes it a bit more concise code wise. And of course I do need to import a default dictionary. So from collections, import default date. So I have my dictionary. Now I want to iterate through every single word in strings. So for word in strings, at the sorted word, so sorted word is going to be my key. This is sorted. This is the identifier for every single group. So this is going to be the key for my dictionary. So at this key, I can just go ahead and append my word that I am on to this list. In the end, all I have to do is return the values of my dictionary. Now there is one caveat with that, and we'll see that over here. If I print what sorted word equals, it is actually a list. So sorted on word, right? Every time we sort a word, it comes out as a list and we can't have a list being a key for a dictionary because a list is something that you can mutate. If I were to make a list, say it's, you know, A, B, B, I can just go ahead and change my value. So list at zero, I can now set to be B instead of A. So if I'm changing my keys, I wouldn't be able to identify my dictionary anymore, right? Because the whole point of having a dictionary is having unique keys that we can't change because those keys are how we identify values and we can't have anything that is mutable. So instead of having a list, I'm actually going to change this to be a sorted word in string form. So how do we do that? This is just some operation. So I'm going to be joining dot join on my sorted word. And just to print that out to see what that looks like, that is going to be essentially now a word in string form because we're joining every single character of that list by nothing in there. So now we have a string and that is going to be our key. So instead of sorted word, I'm going to be doing quotations dot join on this word. So now it's just that string to identify my key. Now when we run this code, it is accepted and we can go ahead and submit. And it's accepted as well. So what is the space and time complexity for this approach? We just went ahead and sorted every single input. So that is n log n for time. Now for space, we are storing every single word. So that is O of n for space. Can we do better? Okay, so what were we doing here? We were sorting every single word and keeping that sorted word to be the key for our group. Instead of sorting all the words, what we can do is actually keep count of how many times every single letter shows up. So what I mean by that, for example, eat, right? We have one E, one A, one T. And with T, we also have one T, one E, one A. And we did this in valid anagrams where we basically kept a counter for every single word. And if you don't know what a counter is, if you haven't seen that video, it's essentially just a dictionary that keeps track of how many times every single letter has shown up. It just keeps counts. So if those two counts are equal, we can sort of have that as an identifier instead of the sorted word, then we can group together those words. The only problem with this is we can't keep this counter, this dictionary, as a key. Because remember, we can't have anything that's mutable be a key for a dictionary. So what can we do here? Okay, first thing I'm going to think about are my edge cases. 
the smallest word that I will come across could potentially have no letters. So nothing to really keep track of there. The biggest word, no matter how big, will only ever have 26 letters. So I only need 26 trackers or 26 spots or variables to keep track of even my biggest word. How can I do that? So what I'm going to do here is essentially maintain a list, index 0 to 25, representing all the letters of the alphabet, so A to Z. And the values at those indices, so A is going to be index 0, Z is going to be index 25, the values at those indices is going to be the counts representing the number of times we've seen those letters. I'm going to take that list after it's done building, convert it into the immutable tuple, and use that as my identifier. So how does that look? So I have a default dictionary, it's still a list, but now as I iterate through my word and strings, I want to make a list. So this list is going to have zero for its values and it's gonna span 26 indices A to Z. And in the beginning, we haven't seen any character show up anytime, so it just initialized to zero. Now for character in my word, at each character, I'm going to have an index associated with it, right? So A is going to be 0, Z is going to be 25. How do I represent that? Well, something I can do is use order. And this is a fairly common operation. So if you are unfamiliar with it, I do recommend looking it up. So what I'm going to do is order of that character minus order of A plus equals 1. And if you have not seen it before, super quickly, let's just print out order of A and order of B. Comment all of this out, run this code. And what this does is convert a letter to a numerical conversion. Every ASCII character has a number. A starts with 97, B is 98, and so forth up until Z and even more characters beyond that. But we do see some relation here, right? A is 97, B is one after that. So if we use 97 or A as our base, we can now just subtract to find corresponding indices from 0 to 25. In the end, what I'm going to do is turn that list into a tuple. So list equals tuple of itself. And instead of using this sorted thing to represent our index, I'm going to be using this list that is now a tuple and just append my word to it. In the end, I still just return the values of my dictionary. So let's see how that looks where we are going to run the code. It's accepted and now submit. And accepted as well. So space and time for this approach. Time, instead of sorting everything, we are just going through it once and keeping track of how many times we've seen everything show up. So that is linear O of N. And with space as well, we are only keeping track of 26 characters for every word. So that's constant for every word. But we are keeping track of, you know, every single word in the group. So that is O of N for space and O of N for time. And before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example. Let's say I have the following input of strings. Let's go line by line to see exactly what we're doing here. First thing I'm going to have is my default dictionary that contains lists. Now I'm going to loop through every single word in my input. The first word I come across is a T. So word is at. Now I'm going to form a list that is going to have 0 for up to 26 indices. So I have a list right here and I have every five labeled just so we know um, what index is what. And now we loop through every single character in my word. So the first character I come across is A. What is the ord of A minus ord of A? So that's just 0. So at index 0, I'm going to add 1. So that's one right here. And for T, ord of T minus ord of A, that would be 20. It's the 20th letter of the alphabet. And at 20, I add one. So this is what my list looks like after I've looped through every single character in my word. Now I'm out of this for loop and into here. I turn this list into a tuple. This whole thing now is a tuple. So I'm going to be using all of this as a key for my dictionary. So at this value, I have my word at. Now I am back in this for loop. So now the word I come across is TA. So word is now TA. 
Now I have another list of 26 characters all initialized to zero. So again, I have this. Now, as I loop through every single character in my word, I first come across T. So at T, and I know word of T minus word of A is 20. So at 20, I add one and I am back into this for loop. So the next character I come across is A. So that is one over here. And now I turn this list into a tuple. So this is a tuple. And at this key, I add my word. So I see that this key already exists. So I'm going to append TA to that key. So now I am back outside, back in my for loop, and the word that I am now on is A. So word is now A, and I'm going to be making a list of zero times 26. So this is zero times 26. For character and word, the first character we come across is A. So order of A minus order of A, so 97 minus 97, that is zero at zero. I'm going to add one, so index zero, we're gonna have one, convert this into a tuple, and add my word to this tuple. In this dictionary, this is going to be another key, and at this key, I'm going to have A. In the end, all we wanna do is return the values. So the values of my dictionary are A, T, T, A, this is one list, and another one is the one that I have just made here, which is A, so in the end, what I will be returning are my values. So this is one value. And my second value is here. And that's exactly how we want to group these anagrams together. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.